Hello everyone, my name is Chris Kim, and in this video, we're going to talk about how Beaker makes working with box storages much easier in Algorand Smart Contracts. Now, there are three types of states that can be accessed with Algorand Smart Contracts. Global state, local state, and box storages. If you want to learn more about global or local states, go watch the Beaker states video showing on the top right. Box storage essentially lets you create infinite amount of storage on Algorand Smart Contracts. I talk about the pros and cons of box storage in the PyTeal box storage video, so make sure you check that video out as well. Now, PyTeal provides all the basic functionalities to create, add, modify, and delete box storages. However, the PyTeal box operations are basic and limited that oftentimes developers will have to write a lot of code to do what they want to do. For example, Let's say you created a box that has an account address as its key and a string value storing the account owner's name. And let's say the content has a string Chris in it. Now, if you want to update the content of the box to Bob, the most efficient way to do this with PyTeal box operations is to first delete the box and then create a new box with box put with the same account address as its key and the string Bob as its value. We have to go through this complex process because box put only lets you update the box content with a value that has the same byte length as the previous box content. Since Chris and Bob have different byte length, simply doing a box put with Bob will fail. Now what's great about Beaker is that it abstracts away this complexity and lets you update the content by simply doing box.set. We'll see what this looks like in the code demo. While you can use box storage in many different ways, the two most prominent ways of using it is to have a mapping of key value pairs or to store a list in a box. So Beaker provides the box mapping class and the box list class so that you can easily create a mapping or a list using box storage. Now let's dive into the code demo to see how you can use Beaker box operations. First, let's take a look at this grocery checklist smart contract created with Beaker to see how box mapping works. Now, before we continue, let's see how this smart contract is structured. This is a simple smart contract that stores grocery items as a box. Inside of each box, it will store a named tuple that has a value item and purchased for each of the grocery item. The item variable will store the name of the grocery and the purchase variable will store a Boolean value that indicates whether you have purchased this grocery or not. All right, that being said, let's continue on with our code demo. Here in line 13, we have a class called grocery states where we store all the states that are going to be on this smart contract. So inside of this class, we have one box mapping. And when we're instantiating this box mapping class, for the first argument, we're passing in the key type which we want it to be an abi.string type. And for its value type, we're going to put in a grocery item class. Now this is a custom construct that we create over here on line eight. We have a class called grocery item, and this is an abi.named tuple type. A named tuple type is an abi base type that lets you store tuples. So inside of this grocery item, we have two values, item and purchased. Item is an abi.string type that will store the grocery item. And the purchase variable is a Boolean type that will store whether this grocery has been purchased or not. In line 17, we're instantiating the application class, naming it grocery checklist with beaker. And for the states, we're going to instantiate the grocery states class so that the application we create has access to the states inside of this grocery states class. All right, coming down here, let's take a look at our first external method called add grocery. So this add grocery method will create a new box that will store the grocery items named tuple. And for this add grocery method, we have one argument item name, and it is an abi.string type. And inside of this add grocery method, we're first going to instantiate two containers. We're going to create the purchase variable where it will be a Boolean type. And we can do that by doing abi.bool and we instantiate that class. And we also create a variable called grocery tuple that will be a container for a grocery item named tuple. All right, once we instantiate our containers, let's go into our PyTeal sequence. So inside of the sequence, we're first going to set the purchase variable to an int value of zero. If you take a look at this set method, you can see that if you set a PyTeal expression, a value that is zero is considered false and value that is greater than zero are considered true. So by storing int zero here, this purchased variable will store a false Boolean value. All right, next up, let's store our name tuple. 
So inside of the grocery tuple container, we're going to set a name tuple where the variable item is set to item name, the argument that we pass in, and the purchased variable that we set over here. Now, if you take a look at the set method for the name tuple ABI base type, the argument that you pass in has to be an ABI base type and not a PyTeal expression or a teal type. That's why we're just straight up passing in the item name argument and not doing something like item name dot get like we do for other arguments and also directly passing in the boolean value instead of encoding it to a teal type. Great, so this line of code will store the name tuple ABI base type that stores the item name and the purchased variable inside of the grocery tuple. And then in line 29, we're actually creating the box that will store the grocery tuple that we created over here. To do that, we first do app.state.grocery item to access our box mapping that we created in our state class. And then we add a square bracket over here. And inside of it, we pass in the name of the box. And we're going to use the item name argument that we pass in as our name of the box. So to do that, we do item name dot get. And then we're going to do dot set grocery tuple to set the name tuple value inside of the box that has a name of this value over here. So as you can see, there needs to be a lot of encoding and decoding of data types when we're dealing with these kind of name tuple. And what's great about Beaker's box module is that it has all these helper methods like the set that will automatically encode and decode your values so that you don't have to do that in your code and it will abstract away the encoding and decoding part for you. Now moving on to the next external method. We have a method here called update purchased. It takes in one argument, item name, the name of the box, and we have an output that will be a grocery item type. This method is going to update the purchase variable that is stored inside of the grocery item named tuple. So here, just like before, we're going to instantiate the containers before we start our PyTeal sequence. So first, we're going to create a variable called existing grocery item, and we're going to initialize it to a grocery item type and a new purchase variable, which will be a Boolean type. Now going into the PyTeal sequence, first we're going to read the box that stores our grocery item. To do that, we do app.state.groceryItem, and inside of the bracket, we pass in the box name that we want to read from. And then we're going to get the entire box by doing the get method here. Now, as you can see in this helper box over here, this get method will get the bytes from this box. So it won't return a name tuple type, it will return a byte array that stores the name tuple. So we need to decode that into a name tuple type. That's why we're doing the dot decode over here and storing that decoded value into the existing grocery item variable, which is a container for a grocery item named tuple type. All right, now next, inside of this new purchase variable, let's set an int value of one, which will be a truthy Boolean type. And then inside of the existing grocery item, we're going to set a new value into that name tuple. For the item variable, we're going to store the item name argument. And then for the purchased variable, we're going to store the new purchased variable, which will be a true Boolean value. Now that we have the updated name tuple, grocery item, we're going to set that new value into our existing box. To do that, we first read our existing box by doing app.state.groceryItem bracket item name dot get. And then we're going to set the updated grocery item name tuple like this. So that's how you update the content of the box using Beaker's box mapping class. And then this method actually returns the output that stores the updated grocery item so we're going to do that by doing app.state.groceryItem, item name.get. So we access the box and then we use this store into method, which will decode the bytes from this box into an ABI type. So it will decode it into a name tuple type. And then it's going to store that decoded value into output. All right, moving on to read item method. This read item method is a simple method that will read the box and return that value. To do that, we are going to pass in one argument, item name, the name of the box, and then the output will be a grocery item type. And then we're going to return one PyTeal expression, which is app.state.groceryItem bracket item name. So we're accessing the box with the name item name, and then we're going to store that value into output which will decode the bytes into a grocery item name tuple type and store it into the output parameter. Last but not least, we have a method for deleting the grocery box. So this delete grocery method will take in one argument, item name, the name of the box again, and then we're going to do app.state.groceryItem 
bracket item name dot get so access the box and then do dot delete on it and the simple line of code will delete the box now this delete method will return one after deleting the box just like the pytl's box delete operation so we need to pop that value off from the stack so that the AVM doesn't complain about there being a value on the stack and fail this transaction. So that's our simple grocery checklist smart contract. Now let's go to our deploy script to see how you can interact with these box methods. First, we're importing in the app instance and the four methods that we have inside of our smart contract. And then we're going to import in local net and client from Beaker so that we can connect to our local net. I'm importing in a const value algo to make my code more readable. And then I'm importing in a logic error, which I'll be using in our script. Down here in line 12, we are going to build our smart contract and then export the artifacts into the artifacts folder. And then we are getting our local net accounts and then we're setting up our application client. Then we're creating the application with our app client. And then we are going to fund our smart contract with one algo. Now, the reason why I'm funding here is to cover the MBR for the boxes that we create. And remember, when you create a box, the MBR of the smart contract goes up. So the smart contract has to hold some algos. And then in line 28, we're going to call the add grocery method, which will create a new box. For the name of the box, we're going to pass in the string value of apple. And then we have to pass in this box array so that the smart contract knows that we are dealing with this box. So inside of the box array, you need to pass in the application ID and the name of the box that you're working with. The reason why you need to pass in this box array is because the smart contract doesn't have access to the entire algorithm blockchain. It only have access to certain data that you tell the smart contract when you're calling the application. So by including in this box array, the smart contract knows that it need to access this data on the algorithm blockchain. After creating our box, let's call the read item method over here. Again, we're going to pass in the string value of apple as item name, and then we're going to include the box array over here. This read item method is going to return an output, I'm going to store that into the value variable, and then we're going to print out the value.return value, which should return a tuple storing the item name and the purchased volume value. Then down here, we're going to update the purchased variable using the update purchased method. So we're going to call it again, pass in the argument apple in the box array, and we're going to print out the updated name tuple here in line 43. And then in here in line 46, let's delete the box by calling the delete grocery method. I'm going to pass in the argument apple and include the box array. And then here in line 48, we're going to try reading the box with the name apple and print out that value. But since we deleted the box already, this should fail and print out this error message. Apple box no longer exists. All right, now let's try running this file to see if everything works. Now, if you want to follow along, make sure you have Docker running in the background. Now let's open up our terminal and let's first launch our local network. To do that, type in algokit local net start. This will launch a private Algorand local net on your computer. Now that we have our local net running in the background, let's run our Python script. To do that, do Python 3 mapping underscore deploy.py. And there you go. You can see when we first read our box, it returned the tuple that stores the name of the grocery item and then whether this item has been purchased or not. So it returns a false value. And then after we updated our box, it returned a tuple with apple and true as the purchase variable. And then after we deleted the box, we got this error message, apple box no longer exists because we tried reading a box that doesn't exist anymore. So that's how you work with Beaker's box mapping. Now let's take a look at another simple smart contract called subscriber count app. This smart contract is going to use the box list class from Beaker to store a list of addresses inside of the box. So first in line seven, we have a subscriber states class. And here we have a global state called IDX which will keep track of the number of subscribers. In other words, it's going to be the length of the box list. And then here in line 12, we have an adder list variable, which is a box list, where the value that's going to be held in this list is going to be an abi.address type. And then the length of the box will be 10. 
So this list can store up to 10 addresses. Here in line 15, we're instantiating the application class, name of the application, and we're accessing the subscriber states class over here. At first, let's look at the bootstrap method. This bootstrap method is going to create the box list and initialize the global state. We do this because our global state value IDX has a default value of int zero. So we need to initialize that. And also we need to create our box list first before we start operating on it. So inside of our bootstrap method, we're going to create the adder list by doing app.state.addRList.create. And again, this is going to return one. So we're going to pop that off from the stack. And then we're going to initialize the global state by doing app.initializeGlobalState. After we bootstrap our smart contract, let's look at our subscribe method. The subscribe method is going to add a new address to the box list. It's going to take in one argument, adder, which is an address type. And inside of our sequence, we're going to access our box list. To do that, we do app.state.addRList. And then we're going to index into it inside of this bracket. And we're going to index using our global state IDX. So we get that value by doing app.state.idx. So since we don't have any addresses in there, this should return zero. So for the index zero of this box list, we're going to set the new value adder into that index zero. After we add the address into the box list, we're going to increment the global state IDX by doing app.state.idx.increment. Now let's go to our method read subscriber. This takes in one argument, the index, which is an abi.un32 type, and it returns an output, which is an address type. And this is going to read the box list using this index. To do that, we do app.state.addRList, and we get the index from the argument, and then we store the accessed value into the output by doing store into. Again, this is going to decode the bytes from the list into an abi.address type. Last but not least, the delete box method. Currently, the box list class doesn't have a helper delete method. So we're just going to use PyTeals box delete box operation to delete the box. To do that, we do app.boxdelete, and then we pass in the byte value of the name of the box, which is adder list. Now, before we move on to our deploy script, our box list can only store static types, and it cannot store dynamic types. You can see what types are static and dynamic in PyTeals documentation and I'll leave the link in the description. But for example, if you want to store a string into a box list, that doesn't work because abi.stringType is a dynamic type. So make sure you know this limitation before you work with box list. All right, inside of our deploy script, we're doing the same thing. We're building and exporting the artifacts. We're getting the local accounts. We're creating an application client. Then we create the smart contract over here. We fund the smart contract. And then we bootstrap the smart contract like this. And again, we're passing in the box array. And because the name of the box we're working with is adder list, we're passing in the string value of adder list here. And then here in line 30 and line 31, we're going to create two different application clients for account two and account three. Then we're going to use each of their application client to subscribe to the smart contract. Here we're passing in the address of account two as the argument adder and we're passing in the box array, and we're doing the same thing for account three. Then down here, we're going to read the subscribers, and we're going to use a for loop to do that. So let's first get our global state index, which will represent the length of our box list by doing app client.get global state. And then we're going to get the IDX global state and store it into our IDX variable over here. I'm doing an int over here because the returned global state could be any of these types. So I'm specifying that this IDX is an int value. And then down here in line 48, we're going to do a for loop of the range of IDX. And then we're going to call the read subscriber with the index to get the address stored in the index of that box list. And after that, I'm going to delete the box over here and this will print out boxes deleted. And let's quickly run this file to see that everything works. Go to the terminal and run the file. And there you go. As you can see, everything works. So that's how you work with a box list bigger class. Well, that's it, everyone. If you have any questions, head to the Algorand Discord channel and get help from our developer relations team or our amazing Algorand developer community. Also, if you like this content, please like and subscribe this channel so that we can help more aspiring Algorand developers. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.